Hey, what's up everybody? Dylan here from Iceberg TV. Today, I've got a very special treat of a course for you today. This is one of the hidden gems that I love to come play when I get the chance. And I'm sure most people that live in North Carolina have probably never played here. We're at Haywood Community College. It's an absolute hidden gem. Very much reminds me of Bradford Disc Golf Course, but it's just a touch more low key and serene, I would say. Hole one is a 290 par three. We're gonna go two off one and then one off all the others. We're gonna go with the Gold Line Saint Pro and the Latitude 64 Brave. Just hit the cage on my first throw of the day. That's a good start. Almost dunked it. All right, now we got the Brave. All right, it's gonna be a strong start. Hopefully you can shoot pretty well today anyway. Let's get after it. All right, we just hit the cage on hole one. I'm gonna be tapping in an easy birdie on our first hole of the day, let's go. Maybe this is a thing at other courses. Maybe it's part of like a pack you can buy from Innova, but this course has little Nate, Sext uh, Nate Sexton pro tips. And it just gives little golden tidbits about how you can be like this handsome gentleman right here. Hole two is a 223 foot par three. I've got the patent pending Tesla in hand, hoping to just hit a nice little forehand that stays on turn most of the way. We need to finish up there and to the left. That's gonna be a beauty, skip up there. Should be inside circle, uh, deep circle one, maybe in circle two. So for those of you who don't know North Carolina very well, Asheville is a city that's about two and a half hours north um, into the mountains of North Carolina. And then Haywood Community College is in a town called Canton, which is about 20 minutes kind of northwest of Asheville. Most people who go to Asheville will play um, the brewery course in town. They also have a very tough mountain course called Richmond Hill. But with those two courses getting most of the action, this course is pretty much always empty out here. All right, we came up a little short with the Tesla, just outside C1. Aim high, let her fly. Oh, off the band. All right, one down through two, it could be worse. Really been liking this patent pending Tesla though, it's a really nice flyer. Hole three is a 215 foot par three. Um, it's kind of over this little ridge through the gap and it's on that downhill slope through the gap here. I've got a lot of my like new used discs in the bag today. I've just got a super fun bag today. I'm on a little mini vacation right now, but this is gonna be the only round I get to play. So I wanted to bag a bunch of super fun discs. So we've got the vintage Glowflex Meteor. Let's see if she can hold the turn. Oh, didn't quite flip enough. We may have to lay up for par. We could perhaps have a sweet death putt. We weren't quite able to sneak through the gap. Still in the middle here. Got a long bit at birdie. All right, it's gonna be another par. Hole four is a 200 foot par three. I can't see the basket. Just gonna try and put this patent pending neutron ion just dead straight. Maybe we'll find a birdie look. I, I mean, I think that's about 200 feet. We'll have to see where we wind up. All right, I wasn't sure where the basket was off the tee. It was pretty much just a dead straight shot. So we do have another birdie look on our hands. Kind of a funky straddle uphill. All right, two down, just like that. Got a very technical par four here on hole five. Got the Gorgon in hand. I need it to mostly stay on hyzer. We need to punch this gap. Really, if we can go straight, we're in a good position, but if we hyzer, it's even better. That should be really good. Ooh, that'll be a nice one. Hopefully I have an easy up and down for the three. All right, we are in the thickets a little bit here. The basket's about 150, just straight that way. Got the new ESP Swarm. This is something new that I'm toying in the bag with. Let's see if we can flex one up there for that birdie putt. 
you haven't tried out the Swarm, you could go check one out over at Power Grip USA. They're pretty good. They're nice and flat and they're really overstable. For shots like this, it's like the perfect disc. You need to release it on Anheuser and you want it to flatten out and flex. I think the Swarm is one of the best in that class. Now, whenever I come play this course, I always see some like really big mushrooms. This thing's like 75% the size of a disc. That thing is a beast. The Swarm did not fail us in circle one, can never complain about a birdie look. All right, three down through five. Heating up a little bit, heating up. Hole six, 201 foot par three. It's just right through this gap here. We do have a little bit of a hyzer line, you know, back to the neutron ion. Just gonna toss a nice soft one up there. Oh, that's perfect. Absolutely parked. It's leaning against the pole. We're going to be four down through six. There's always cool mushrooms out here. This one's even bigger than the disc. Comment below. What kinds of mushrooms are these? Whoa. This one's even bigger than that one. Wow. Comment below. What the heck are these? Hole seven. I think it's in the 174 foot location. It's going to be another par three. We're going to go back to the trusty ion. The ion's been flying very true. Come on, Ion, get over there. All right, circle's edge. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to make a putt for this one. One thing I love about this course, it has really solid T signs. Also, these really nice concrete, and they even elevate some of these T pads just to make sure that they're really flat. So you can really see a lot of work went into putting this course in. And I'm sure the stu students are using it all the time because the fairways are nice and beat in. All right, the pixel's been hot. Can we go down five down through seven? That'll be officially heater territory. Man, ever since I added these pixels back into the bag, my made putts have just about doubled. I really need to stick to these pixels because they just feel so nice coming out of the hand. Hole eight is going to be a 250 foot kind of hyzer bomb. We're going to go back to this gold line Saint Pro. This thing is way more stable than I thought it was going to be. So we need to go kind of around this tree in the middle of the fairway and then hook hard to the left, hopefully getting a little skip as well. That should be it. All right, as long as we got a good enough skip, we'll have another birdie look. But I'm not sure it pushed far enough. Have to, have to go check that one out. So when it comes to disc golf courses for me, I like to break most courses down into one of two categories, tournament play courses and non-tournament play courses. And this one may not be the best for tournaments because it is a little bit too easy, but sometimes just coming out and playing easy courses is super fun. The layout's good. The T signs are easy to follow. It's just a beautiful area and it's so just peaceful and relaxing to play out here. And I wouldn't want to play a tournament out here but this is somewhere where I'd love to just come play with my friends, play a solo round, just really enjoy playing disc golf for no reason other than it's just, it's just a fun time. Did not get nearly enough skip. I'm kind of wondering if it rolled down a little bit. Come on, Simon. No, that's low. Not used to putting uphill. Need to really give that one some serious height. All right. Missed an easy one there. And if I grew up in Asheville or Canton or one of the surrounding areas, this is a very beautiful little campus. It's just so quaint. If you're a low key person, introverted, you like your kind of free time, your personal space, I feel like this would be a really cool place to go to school. And any college or university that has a disc golf course running through the main campus, you already know it's going to be a pretty chill university to attend. Hole nine, another 200-ish foot par three. We're gonna go back to the Glow Flex Meteor. We need to go nice and straight most of the way and then fade up the hill at the end. Get up there. That is absolutely parked. That Meteor is by far the most overstable Meteor I've ever thrown. It's, it's a really nice one. Oh, we're lucky we didn't wind up down in one of these little tree enclosures here. All right, went a little long. Nothing big Simon can't handle. 
Nice. All right, so far we've missed three birdies through nine holes. So is that really six down through nine, just like that? It's a pretty scorching pace. See if we can keep it up going into the back nine here. Hole 10, 195, par three. We're gonna go back to the swarm here. I like this disc for this shot because I can hit the biggest part of the gap on a small amount of Anheuser. And it's gonna just have that stability to fight back. Ooh, it barely gets through. It's another birdie putt. We almost cut a little too tight. That's why we went with the Annie forehand to make the gap as big as humanly possible. All right, nice little straddle. Put ourselves to about 10 feet. Seven down through 10. Power Grip USA, Iceberg 10, 10% off the swarm. Hole 11, 295, par three. I was looking at either the Meteor or the Tesla. I think I'm gonna go with the Meteor here. I really wanna kind of test the stability on this thing. I'm gonna throw it nice and hard. That Meteor is incredible. I've never had a Meteor anywhere close to that stable. Shockingly enough, the Meteor went a bit long. We are in the circle. Kind of a funky straddle here. Make sure we don't foot fault. Nice. I think this Meteor is gonna become a staple in my bag. I've always loved the feel of the Meteor, but I've always wanted one. It's just a few ticks more stable, and this is the chosen one right here. Hole 12 has two positions. We've got a par four that goes, we need to go left of the Mando tree through the gap and then way over to the right is the par four or it could be in the par three straight. I don't actually know. I'm gonna go for the straight shot with the tangent. Then we'll figure out what to do when we get up there. I mean, that's perfect for the par four. As far as the par three goes, I have absolutely no idea. And in Charlotte, we've got Hornet's Nest. We have Nevin, we have Renaissance Gold. But going to play around on one of those courses can take like two and a half to three hours. And going and playing courses like that all the time has really helped me develop an appreciation for courses that are designed solely to just have the most fun. And I feel like this Haywood Community College course, the students that come here it makes disc golf so accessible. Anyone pretty much, if they've been playing for a month or two, can come out here and get a couple of birdies. And that's going to help people fall in love with disc golf then eventually seek out those more difficult courses. But playing the super hard courses all the time can be very tedious and it can be discouraging for new players. So I feel like courses like this are probably more important for casual players than the championship level courses. But I'd love to know your opinion on that. Comment below. I've actually come up a touch short. I really want to go up this left side of the second fairway, but... We're pinched off. We hit a tree and we landed about here. I do have a tricky flex with the swarm. This could be a missed birdie for sure. Very tight gap. Oh, swing, skip. Oh no, I hit the stump. Perfect execution. I just got absolutely stumped. All right, it's been a long time since I've had a birdie streak going for this long. I'd love to keep it going. This is a very tough putt here though. Over or under, we're gonna go over. Just kind of have to finesse this one in. Oh, go. Oh, it's a touch short. Darn. I want to keep the birdie streak alive. I felt like I executed it well, but that stump definitely knocked us out of contention of keeping the birdie streak alive. Hole 13 is another good swarm hole. We've got to hit the Annie Flex. We've got like a low ceiling and a high floor. So you've got a pretty specific shot. One squiggly tree branch to miss. Discraft swarm, nice and low. Annie Flex. I think I did it. Skip. Go in. Oh, he kicked and rolled. Might be short, but we'll have a putt. 
Yes. Wow, that was a long one. That was probably one step outside the circle. Feels good to be having these pixels again. I've been making more putts the last week than I've made in the last six months. And although hole 14 is only 225 feet, it's pretty short. This is a very tight gap right off the tee. Can I either go with the flat, pushy tangent or the baby hyzer flip paradox? I think I'm going to go with the tangent for this one. Throwing it once today and it went super straight. Yep, come on. Man, that could not have missed the ace by much. I think we just sailed either to the left or the right of the basket and just whew, right into here. That was a really nice line. Tough birdie putt, though. Come on. Oh, no. At least it didn't roll. Struggling on the uphill putts today. I need to get them up. If anyone has any uh, neutron tangents. Wow, okay, this finishing stretch has become very technical. My initial thought was just to go straight at it with the tangent, but I do think we have a swarm flex line as well. The swarm has been working well for me on the flicks. It's nice and stable and skippy. Hopefully we can just skip right up towards the pin. Skip. Oh, I hit a rock. Oh. All right, hole 16, 216, par three. It's just kind of in this little orchard looking area here. We're gonna go back to the swarm. Trust the Anheuser, let it flex up, skip under the basket. I think I aced it. Go in, yep. Oh, the tree, the one branch cut it in its prime. I'm pretty sure that was going in. Man, couple, it just hit right there. I'm pretty sure that was going in. Hole 17, we've got a 225 foot hyzer. We're gonna go back to the glow meteor. You can't see the pin. It's just around this corner to the left here. And I'll show you guys the cool water wheel over there after. It's not going to be a great drive, but let's go look at the wheel. That's the important part. And I'm not sure how this works, but I'm pretty convinced that it probably is generating some amount of electricity. But it just makes such a nice sound. I feel like I could just put a hammock up here and fall asleep to the sound of the water falling on the wheel. All right, we got the downhill death putt right towards the water. We're on too much of a heater not to run it. Right, we didn't roll in the water. We did tap out the easy par. Catch you guys on hole 18. After playing an entire round, they hit us with a 360 foot par three. I'm gonna break out for the first time in the round, the PFN Star X-Cal. I do believe this is in the Echo Star plastic. It's got the little chunks of disc in it when you put it, hold it up to the sun. Never thrown this one before, but I'm hoping she's nice and stable. Yeah, that's a perfect X-Cal. That was pretty short. All right, the X-Cal put us just outside the circle, funky downhill straddle putt. Go. Oh, hits the cage. This flipped up nicely. This might wind up going into the bag as like my stock forehand disc. Very nice X-Cal. I'll have to tally up my score in the editing process, but... We shot, we, I think we missed six or seven holes, so. I think we shot better than 10 down, which is pretty good. It's only my second time playing here, but it was just as fun as I remember. Shout out one last time.